everybody. This is Linda with Let's Talk. And I'm Leslie with Let's Talk. And we're here today with Tori. Hi, <laughs> Tori. Yeah, hey. Hello. We're going to share her experience of doing a home birth. A home birth. I've never even thought that I would talk to someone in person who's actually had a home birth. So I'm excited about this story. I can't wait to hear your saga. Thank you. What made you decide to do a home birth? Um, it was something that I was looking into before I got pregnant, maybe a few months before. Um, and then after I got pregnant, I was just kind of, it was still kind of like lingering as an option. I started out working with midwives, so mm -hmm. I wanted the option to be able to, you know, do a home birth or birth center, you know what I, so I would have options from the start. Okay. And um, then COVID happened around March and okay. she was due in May, like beginning of May. And that was in the beginning of everything. We didn't know like what was going to happen, like how serious this was. Yeah. So that kind of pushed me into like just doing a home birth as a, you know, means of protection because oh, we, know, we know we're safe here. So we might as yeah. well just stay here. Good thinking. Um, good. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good thinking. Yeah. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, so I was with nurse midwives and then I transferred to a home birth midwife towards like the 30th week of my pregnancy. And um, she was able to take me and we had just um, meetings, like the midwifery care meetings were in house or I would just drive to her office at that point. Okay. Um, but the last few weeks they were just in house so she would come and I wouldn't have to leave or anything. Wow. So. Yeah, that um, that's what kind of pushed me into yeah you know, just moving forward with the home birth. So now this this is your background. This is what you've done as a profession, so to speak. No, no, it's just doing research, and that what what made you prompted you to do that. Now, what's your baby's name? Kinsley. She's so beautiful. Was it an easy delivery? Yes. Really? Would that make would that have made it easier because it was at home, or was it just because the nature of your delivery? I think that it made it easier coping with the waves being at home, being in a space oh. where no one was bothering me, no one was asking me unnecessary questions, <clears throat> there was no one like touching me that I wasn't okay with. So it was just very undisturbed oh, wow. um, and I was able to just go into like a more of a meditative state to deal with the, you okay. know, the constructions. Interesting. Wow, Linda. I mean, have you heard of that, be Linda? Have you heard of that before? No, but when I found out she was doing it, it was so, uh, it was neat and like, I'm going to say so weird to make it different because I, you, you know how you hear stuff, but you yeah. never knew anybody that did it. So exactly. I thought it was amazing that she was like, okay, I'm doing this. And I'm like, yeah. Cool, you know, I love her to death, so I'm gonna support her no matter what she does. But it was like cool. And I know her and I have a good relationship with her that we can talk through. But did you think about this? Did you think about that? And she thought about everything for emergencies to where the hospital is at, just in case something happened. She did the whole process. So it wasn't like, okay, I'm gonna do this and that's it. She took the time to do the research with that. Okay. Now Tori, how long were you in labor? Uh, started at 5 a.m. and she was born at 3, so just about, you know, 10 hours. Oh, wow. That, you know, that congratulations and just God bless you with that beautiful decision to do something like that. And were you surrounded by family members? Um, so it was my grandmother's house, so I had her. Okay. And, and I had two of my best friends that were there as well. And okay. there was a midwife and a doula and the midwife assistant. So there was quite a few just powerful, you know, loving women, supportive women that were there to usher me into, you know, motherhood. So it was yeah. nice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the subtitle of this uh, talk show is Making Relationships That Last. Now, are you still in contact with these ladies? Of course, your grandmother, but the other ladies as well? Yes. So, um, 
the two women that were there that were my friends, they're like her honorary aunties mm -hmm. and um, the midwife, I'm still in touch with her because at this point I am in pursuit of the career of midwifery for myself. Oh, nice. um, so yeah, I, I'm oh, keeping in contact you. with her to be able to you know, just. Yeah. Now yeah. would you say having your baby at home, is that what prompted you to go into this career possibly? No, um, I was kind of already on this track. I just didn't know that's where I wanted to be. So I had a bachelor's in pre-medicine and I was looking into the obstetrics and gynecology, but I wasn't really liking that system, the way that they were, you know, taught to do different things. So, and I, I thought that there was a different way of care that I would want to provide. And once I found midwifery, then experience the care for myself during that process, it was like, okay, yeah, this is definitely, you know, the field that I would want to be in. What a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful story and a beautiful journey that you went through. What was your husband like with all this? I mean, what was his thoughts? May I ask? Um, so my husband was deployed during my, like the last five, four or five months of my pregnancy. Okay. Um, so his support was very like, hi. <laughs> his support was a lot um, over the phone and just being reassuring and, um, you know, just supporting whatever made me happy, you yeah. know, me feel comfortable and yeah. Wow. So. Now, are you guys thinking of having more children? It's a possibility. We'll see. <laughs> the same thing. Would you go that same route? Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Now, what advice would you give to women who are maybe on the fence that well, maybe I want to try this or, you know, they're curious, but they're not sure if this is something for them. What advice would you give? Do the research um, and, and find out for yourself what's okay. You know, mm -hmm. there are things that are high risk to some people that may not be high risk to others. So, okay. or certain things that are acceptable to one person that are you getting care with or not acceptable to the other ones. You know, there's different variations of normal and you have to find a physician or a midwife, someone that will be able to, um, you know, make you feel comfortable in those decisions. And if you feel like you're comfortable, you know, with yourself, with your own, you know, knowledge and intuition, then, you know, you can walk that road too. So there's, there's options for everyone and just explore your options. Exactly. And I love how you brought in about the other women, like the midwife and the doula. So we're talking about relationships. So obviously you had relationships with them prior to this. And you, like you said, you still have relationships with them. What was that like? I mean, in the early stages of your forming your relationships with these ladies? Um, so the doula was one that was with me from the beginning of my pregnancy till the end. Okay. Um, I started out in San Diego, but I gave birth in Chicago. So wow. I had like, uh, it was more of a tele telephone, um, you know, relationship in the beginning of my pregnancy. Okay. And then towards the end, we were able to go to lunches and um, different thing. And she was able to educate me about the different tests that were like standardized and just you know let me know that those are optional and everything that i'm doing with you know anyone is optional i you know i have i have different choices and what different um side effects different things like that would be coping mechanisms that i could take during the birth process and yeah. she was just kind of my childbirth educator um in a way like my person that i could go to you know of uh, just a text away if I needed anything, any questions. Um, so yeah, she was definitely a, a good support mm -hmm. and a good performer, you know. I love that. And Linda, you know, since we're talking about relationships, I think that is so pivotal that you have a relationship with someone prior to making any type of major decision. What do you think? I like it to the point that her experience of being able to do a home birth, she was able to actually spend more time with the child. And can you share that experience? Because you didn't cut the umbilical cord right away. And just that whole experience is different than what you would have in a hospital. So I thought that was neat when she shared that. Okay. Um, so I ended up having her in a bathtub. And after she was born, um, 
I was the only hands that were on her. My midwife caught her for me because I wasn't in, I wasn't in the position to catch her. But after that, she was in my embrace the whole time. We were able to breastfeed right away. I was able to hold her skin to skin for at least 12 hours after she was born. Um, there was no, like no rush for anyone to weigh them or <laughs> <laughs> there was no rush for anyone to weigh them or you know take them away to do anything or be rough with them at all um she was within my my you know my hand reach <laughs> for the whole time and we were able to just bond and mm -hmm. yeah it was it was really peaceful i didn't have any it's beautiful i love People that me, like it was great <laughs> I just absolutely love that. I'm so glad that you have Tori sharing her experience with us. Yeah, and I really loved the part that she's able to have that time. I mean, yes, when you first have the baby, they give you the baby for a few minutes, but then they take it away to do the test and all that stuff. And she's able to bond in a way that a lot of parents won't able are not able to do. Yeah. So I think that's amazing. I think she's a wonderful person. I love dearly. And I am so proud of her of just watching her as a little baby to have a baby is weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing to see her as a woman and just being a mom now mm -hmm. and doing things that you hear, but you never saw, you know what I mean? Like she's teaching me new things, you know? And that is a, it's neat to see that generation that's younger than you teaching you i mean right after she did it or even before i was calling her what about this and how is this and what's going on with this and she was educating me on different things and even afterwards i mean like even now she's potty training her little girl and i think that's amazing wow. of just what she's doing and yeah. you don't hear of this and you don't see that and that bond she's having with her daughter <laughs> to another level yes so, I think it's neat. This is not about if you should or if you shouldn't, but this is just a, a experience someone is sharing to say this is an option if it's for you. But mm -hmm. I love how she, she doesn't push it on anyone. It's not good or bad if you do, if you don't. You can do it any way you want. But I just want to say, meet somebody and know somebody that actually experienced it because I never did. I always heard it. But I never saw it. Like even yeah. on TV, they don't really show that part of it too much. You know, it's still a hospital scene. But mm -hmm. I think this was neat that she planned it. She went through the whole process of having the conversation, doing the research, and she did it. And the babies, if you can, you can see, she's healthy, she's fine, yeah. got tons of hair, and beautiful. <laughs> so I am proud of her. I am really proud of her. So, wow. um, is there anything else? Latori, you think you would like to share or no? Okay. Well, I think that was great. And I really appreciate you sharing that. And you know, Linda, I have to go back to um, the point of this, this show is about relationships. And I love how you see this relationship between Latori and her baby. Mm -hmm. And it's something to be said about mothers who take that time. And kudos to you, young lady, that you have put your child um, at the forefront of your thinking. And that was your desire to do this home birth, which is amazing. That says a lot about you as a young person thinking on those lines. You're very forward thinking. Um, so kudos to you. And I love your journey that you shared with us. And I can't wait to hear more about, you know, if you guys do choose to have more children, if you're going to do this route again, and what would that experience be like? Oh, we would definitely go the same route. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. So Leslie, do you want to say your famous quote? Oh, you know, I have to say it, Linda, because you know, <laughs> this is really what it's about. It's about life lessons. And here we have a life lesson right from the, from the mouth of a young lady who just gave birth in her home. So this is a life lesson. It's about making life lessons, life choices, and most importantly, it's about love. It's about laughter, because we want to bring that laughter in. And ultimately, what's the goal? Making relationships that last. So thank you for watching, and stay tuned for our next episode. Bye. Bye.